The first piece is a, is a, is a persona called Tattoos Needle Jewish Museum. Considering the political climate of the world right now, especially in the Middle East, I deem it appropriate to read. Um, I grew up Jewish. Um, my mother made it very clear that that was something of an anomaly um, and how important it was. However, my last name is Lebanese. My father's Lebanese. So there is um, sort of this reconciliation that exists between the two. Um, so I'm going to begin now. Tattoo is needle Jewish music. I come from women starving for sleep, chaplets stuck to deflated breasts, a prisoner's palm clashing close under his control. His fingers steered me where to crawl, dig, and drag through convoys of skin. He taught me the art of etching and scraping numbers into arms. I hold drops of dried blood and muck. Um, the next poem is what you would call a contrapuntal poem, where it's, it's juxtaposed with, between two um, look like block pieces. Um, it comes from actually music, meaning braided together. So what it does is it takes two pieces of literature and fuses the two. Um, it was made famous by the Oleo poems by Tanya Majess, who actually won, um, I think it was the National Book Award for Oleo. It's the uh, collection about Civil War um, African Americans. Um, the left part of the poem is actually taken from Shakespeare's The Tempest. How many lions? How many lion-hearted, lowly creatures heard mercy's gallows slam? Are there here in the Pied Piper's courtyard? How Buteus hired guns, our mankind is. Lay down arms for alms. O brave new world, for light yearning to be found, we are such stuff as dreams are made on. Our little life waiting, some night song, to be sung by soil. Um, the next poem, I'm, I teach high school, this, is, this next poem is actually for a student of mine who passed um, from cancer. Um, this is while teaching uh, Eli Weisel's night. Again, it's a contrapuntal poem. Climax, teaching Eli Weisel tonight. I ask, should Eli eat his dying father's food? There is nothing you can do, John with terminal cancer says. You can't think of others, imagine. Trying to survive Auschwitz, only worrying about yourself. Who interrupts John? But he's your father. You're crazy. What do you know? You don't know what it's like to be dying. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the next poem is actually from Matthew Shepard. Um, in 1998, Matthew Shepard was um, in Laramie, Wyoming at a gay bar, and he was actually kidnapped by two men. Became Henderson and taken to a field and brutalized. He was tied to barbed wire and basically died. Um, this poem is for him. Lord of Crows. In a meadow of forget me nuts, a farmer bucked barley in Wyoming dark. Inside a chicken coop, his son chooses eggs. He picks the black he picks the best blackberries for breakfast. For tomorrow, for tomorrow. The boy runs into the house, slams the screen door behind him. He drops an egg, his mother mothers, no yolk. 
two miles west in Laramie, a bartender wipes the bar, counts his tips, and looks at his rusted trailer home out the window. A stray cat rustles through garbage, and jukebox belts. I'll be what I am. Two men play pool, another introduces himself as Matthew, he buys both around. Soon the three set out together. In a pickup truck, a beer bottle rocks back and forth on the floor, striking Matthew's feet. Next to him, a Bible, barbed wire. As they drive to a deserted field, maybe filled with forget-me-nots, rob Matthew of his wallet, shoes and pistol with him. They bind his 98-pound frame to a fence with barbed wire and run into him. 18 hours later, a crow pecks at his straw-like hair, slipping on his dented bloody skull. A farmer picks the base spuds. A child rides his bike after Blackberry's nets. He mistakes Matthew for a scarecrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was born in Queens. I've been a Met fan all my life, um, and that is due to my grandfather, who was actually born in Brooklyn and grew up with the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. And when the Dodgers left in 57, 58, to, to LA, he became a Met fan. So all my love for baseball, how long I've been playing, is because I've been here before. I come from finding my mother to wear a New York Mets shirt and not a velvet dress, picture day, in first grade. I come from waves of pride when she pushed my arms through burgundy sleeves, a dusky, a, a doily collar scratched my neck. I smiled at the camera anyway. I come from my mother's afternoon whimpers, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I love you, on my bed, my crinkled Mets shirt weaver. I come from resting my head on a baseball glove, falling asleep at home, late. Pretending dirt with a blanket, stretching socks up leg like they were my wedding, stocking sliding pants sleeves over my knees. I come from hours of death stares, men and women who at first scowl and stop to watch me in a cage, but smirk when I hit a pitch after pitch going 85 to 90 miles an hour. At 43, strangers still warm. Miss, you know that's really fast. I come from inside wax pads, finding how we can stick a gun on the top of mound of cardboard baseball cards. From the ne neglected natural skills because I was a girl, my little league coach put me in right field where boys never hit the ball. From teaching myself to catch fly balls against the brink of my childhood home, my father who tolerated the game, threw me movies high enough to hit the top clouds. I come from my grandfather's walk up apartment stories above broken tracks he jumped over. Trolleys I wish I could have dodged, but didn't take down blocks from Emmett's field. I come from picturing myself belonging, a kid in the not home game, searching for the windows in the outfield wall at Emmett's, just for a peanut-sized peak at the game. I come from a hole in the fence my brother acts with a bat for us to slip through to our diamond we played on for years. From watching out for cops, my brother lifting just enough of that broken and bent fence for me to slide under, so close to earth, even closer to the dirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm doing on that. You're good. Okay. You're good. because they run out of their houses to 7-Eleven, uh, pursuing Skittles and iced tea cravings. At the park, a cop threw Andrew against the brick wall because he fit a suspect, suspect's description. The can of Arizona iced tea in his pocket popped and ran down his leg like he heard like someone's nerves. Because it could have been Arnold, who was on a full ride to college, hit with a bullet in the stomach while smiling wrinkled hands. 
I can see Mike sprint away because he's scared someone is following him, not because he did anything. It could have been his blood running down a sewer drain mixed with skittle dye, his candy and corpse covered with sand after the body was pronounced dead. It could have been Ron who asked me before the Ferguson riots, why did blacks still sit in the back of the bus if they don't have to anymore? And I asked him, do you? He just looked down at his desk. The other day, my oldest friend's husband, Derek, repeated that could have been me taking a job. I could have been shot. I asked, are you afraid to go for a run now? Not where we live, other places, yes. I added, my love is from Kentucky. While it's not the same, there are counties like Hazard where we can't even hold hands or order a wedding cake. Prejudice is prejudice, he responded. In the background, my oldest friend, Nicole, yelled, white privilege. A week later, a witness records an officer kneeling on the neck of a black man lying on his stomach for almost nine minutes before an ambulance came. If I would have tried to stop the cop, would I have had this case of Shot. It could have been my friends, Mark or Derek. It could have been me at Derek's funeral, my arms around the cold, trying to hug the herd. Yeah. In that kind of woman. I've woken in jeans unzipped, bunched at my hips, clothes when a guy grew too large to handle, open to women who didn't love, tongues undeserving my taste, never found a way. I just teased with wetness. Those days, it was all I could give, even a decade after a stranger forced his hands inside of me. Between the hour of coming and going, I'd get up and feel for my depression, left in a mattress just to know I was there drive until I found myself in some body of water where waves fell at my feet like nymphs mistaking me for a goddess, pleading to kiss away their immortality. I'd pictured the only woman I'd made love to on a beach. She ran to the surf's lip, wriggled out of clothes and screamed, you coming. I slowed my pace to watch her finger wax, her figure wax. The closer I came, low tide ride against skin on the moonlight, Smirking, she called again, coming. I addressed and folded my, arm, my arms across my chest. She strolled to me, dripping, dropped my hands. You're so beautiful. You have a body like Eve. Don't come to love. Don't ever hide. It was months before I told her of being assaulted. Adolescents spent hiding in long sleeves, turtlenecks, jackets zipped up, jeans even in July and August. That night, her body was bandaged, drenched in tentacles. The gods of her tongue trailed me. We became another kind. nightclub that was shot up on June 12th, 2016. Mm. At the time, it was the biggest terrorist attack after 9-11. Um, 49 people died, 53 were injured. Um, it occurred almost a year later that Obama signed the bill legalizing same-sex marriage on June 26th, 2015. Uh, on a personal note, um, my wife and I were watching the barrage of images on the news of people carrying the wounded and bloody, and I remember saying to her, this could have been us. It's just geographically, we were in New York, not Florida. Pulse. To them, were already bodies on the floor, dancing, then shot dead, not making it out three months ago. We're cooled by the same water, ebbing at the shore. Like them, we get scared of corpses drenched in red. They're us, those bodies on the floor. We dream of a day we won't have to say anymore, next could be me or the woman I chose to win, not making it out the dreams. Holding hands, we choose to fight this war, my lips press against her skin in our bed. To them, we're already just bodies on the floor. I'm not damned or in need of a cure. I really don't need 
conversion. Instead, know this, I'm worthy of walking through creatures life. Even when living becomes less thrilled and short, we won't believe and flee until all blood is blood. We're not just bodies on the floor. We'll dance through an hour.